Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Shadows Over Loathing. So we had just got back to this refrigerator factory. We've got the amount of money they'd ask us to get, 500 meat. Let's try and make a deal. You again, so you ready to join a party or what? Yeah, you want to join a party, huh? Clancy, quit it or I'm going to slug you one right in the mush. Uh, well... With three moxie, we can actually get them to take 300. Well, I've only just got the extra moxie, so that would, we could have done that before. Hmm, it's like I'm a little light. Would you take 300? Well, all right, that sounds pretty fair. Thanks, and welcome to the club. Yeah, welcome. Thanks, I guess. Here's your membership ring. He hands you a ring, and the whole group of mobsters wander off, divvying up your meat as they go. You got an item. Fop bum egg ring. This gives us extra meat after combat. Which might be interesting. What we what's our current ring? The mood ring. Well, that's just a bit of a joke item. So why don't we re why don't we um, equip the fop bum egg ring? A refrigerator truck. Probably not the kind you're thinking of. For two counts as a fleet. They have a whole fleet of these things. A pool of chemicals. All right, we can fish in the chemicals. Uh, you carefully fish all the useful chemicals out from the middle of all the dangerous ones. So we've got some miscellaneous chemicals. Okay, what's this? An old toolbox. We've got a sharpening stone and some self-adhesive rivets. Now that's good because um, I wanted to equip maybe these barbecue tongs. Um, but they weren't quite as good as the sharpened trench spork. However, if I can sharpen them uh, oh no. Oh, okay. I want to. I think you've got to equip it first and then we use it. Great, so that does three hot damage now. And that does three physical damage. So we're using something that's got like. I don't know, maybe it's an extra status effect or something on it? A frost peony, let's pick it. Got an item, frosty flakes. Box of miscellaneous discarded industrial junk. We've got a refrigeration coil. Okay. Huh. Okay. Let's actually go in the building, shall we? I kind of forgot what we're here to do. Oh, we're looking for the next cursed item, I think. This workbench doesn't seem big enough for refrigerator repairs. So let's make some stuff. Uh, okay, I could make some combat items. Hmm. Oh, we'll leave it for now. New and empty boring fridges. Chest of tools. We've got a sharp, another sharpening stone at an all, and anarchists' hardware. Can we do? We can do stuff with fancy combat items now. Deal five cold damage to all enemies. That's pretty good, actually. Let's um, let's do that. We could also make the salt. Okay, we'll do that too. Uh, what is that? The all. What's that for? Combat item. Ble applies bleeding. Okay. Crane control. It's locked from the inside. Someone's going to be in trouble. Looks like somebody's going down over there. Let's hide and watch. Is it all there? All 40 cases? It's there, Gluck. Dark Knoll! What are you doing here? Surprise inspection! Warm. Oh dear. Oh, interesting. What the heck? You can see what's going on over yonder. There seems to be a bit of a standoff between the mob guys and the other ones. Cautiously approach. The lady in the weird crimbo hat glares at you as you approach. I don't recall inviting you to this party. Are you going to introduce yourself? My name is... Puddin Tame. What's wrong with your hat? Nothing at all. A crimbo hat is appropriate for all seasons. It's all spooky and like... Wrong. I'm sure I have no idea what you mean. Oliver, dear, are you busy? <laughs> uh, be a deer and kill this guy, would you? Uh-oh. <laughs> the crimbo lady smiles and leaves the same way she came in. <clears throat> in a horrible weird spiral of negative space. The weird shadow monster that was once a person turns to face you. Hello? 
Shadows begin to gather round him, abstract, menacing shapes. Hey, uh, hey you mob guys, can I get you to give me a hand with this? Considering the newly terrified Mr. Gluck is between us and the exit, he seems like we got no choice. Alright, take Gluck on. Ooh, boss fight. Ooh, ooh. What is this? Shadowy slab. Oh, it's gonna reduce my AP to zero. I don't want that. God, they're all hitting me. Alright, well, I'm gonna zap this with my tongs. Ay, ay, ay. Oh my god, this is hard. Alright, well, I think we gotta heal. He's got 26 health. He's gonna kill Gabby. That's gonna hit Eldridge. Okay, so I wanna I wanna hit the this one. Ah, Gabby's down. Why is he doing so little damage? No! Effect aloof. You lost that fight, but you don't even care. Water off a duck's back. Oh, I'll try that again, I suppose. That was pretty tough. Alright, at least I've got two AP again now, so. Get rid of that with two physical damage. Not much, is it? I think maybe we should uh, toss the grenade that deals 10 to everyone. It's a bit better, isn't it? Oh, that killed me in one hit. Uh, I think we should flap slap. I got one health now. Five health. There he goes. With the shadow creatures defeated, the two mob guys brush themselves off. You, this cape has got me all balled up. And how? This whole scene is nutty as a squirrel's mistress. Come on, let's amscray. They tip their hats to you and make for the door. Investigate what's left of the guy. He mostly dissolved into a cloud of that weird shadow stuff. There are a few objects on the ground. A pocket watch, a bank pouch, and an official looking document of some sort. So I've got a dangerous pocket watch. Uh, the ticking of the pocket watch sounds hollow and ominous. You don't like it. It's just wrong once per fight. <laughs> a bank pouch full of meat. Uh, that's probably money. And a deed to the speakeasy. Take a quick look at the document. It turns out this glut guy was the owner of the speakeasy. Now you are, maybe. Is that how deeds work? Well, what do you know? So this. Let's open the pouch full of meat. We got 300 meat. So we got our, we got our money back, basically, for coming in here. That's kind of cool. Um, was this the cur- this is probably the cursed item, so I don't want to screw ourselves, basically. This booze looks tainted, and it also appears to be dangerous, and it's got some sort of sinister magical energy. Uh-oh, this fridge is plugged in. A little note says, experimental, not for lunches. Open it. The fridge has been fitted with an experimental automatic ice cube maker. Unfortunately, it's made one single gigantic ice cube that fills the entire fridge. I guess if you ever need a block of ice as big as you, here's where you can get it. Can we do anything with this? There's no reason to mess with it now. Alright. Uh, I guess that's saying we can just go back, so let's do that. Um, I think we just go back to Plunkett Street. I think we've done everything else. On your way to wherever, you run into a cool guy wearing some cool sunglasses sitting down in the avenue. Sorry, strutting down the avenue. Hey, baby, what's happening? Uh, hi. I can see you dig the shades. You got good taste. 
I... what the what? You like my sunglasses? Oh, I gotcha. I, I don't think anyone calls them shades for at least another 20 years, though. I pride myself on being on the cutting edge. He flips open his coat and showing you a row of sunglasses. Care to buy yourself a pair? For you, only 25 meat. Uh, sure, why not? Now that's what I like to hear. He takes your meat and expertly selects the best pair of sunglasses for you from the lining of the coat. Looking good, baby. Nice doing business with you. And that's the last of the cash I needed to square things up with Miss Brewster, so thanks for that, baby. Who's Miss Brewster? She's the lady that runs the boarding house me and the other traveling salesmen stay at when we're in town. She's strict, but it's a nice place. Check it out sometime. Alright. Still, we'll go back to Bunkett Street. So do we go straight when you use the decursor? Dangerous pocket watch. <coughs> The machine snorts the pocket watch up into its dome and begins its strange and loud work. The pocket watch is pulled this way and that, its ticks become it kits, and its tocks cots. And as its three hands are forcibly bent back, you swear you hear screams. And then it's done. The watch falls into your lap, hands now set to 14, 15, 25. We have an uncursed pocket watch. The watch's curse now resides within the machine. Want to project your consciousness into it? Yeah. In your mind's eye, you see the hands of a pocket watch spin back on themselves with jittery violence. With each revolution, the face of the watch itself expands until it is larger than you, and the building, and the street. Your whole world lives in a blur of the fast spinning hands, in which you see life go by in reverse time. Submarines turn to longships, cities to stone dwellings, cowboys to courtesans. You are travelling faster and faster to the beginning of time itself, and there's no telling when this ride will end. <laughs> a dinosaur. Uh, Calliope's still sleeping on her tail. Eat the cat, obviously. It's a radio. Uh, can we eat Charles Wallace? Grok. Yeah, easy does it, baby. We're all hungry. Please help. I'm a dinosaur. Rawr. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Okay. Can we go in here? With those two salad forks? No, you lack the opposable thumbs necessary to turn a doorknob. You're completely contained in here unless you figure out how to open doors. Uh, break the door down, I'm a big dinosaur. Humph! You slap your prehistoric tummy against the wood, but it doesn't even make a dent. Maybe that's why the dinosaurs went extinct. They couldn't open doors. Roar. I have no dexterity. Eat the chessboard! Rom. <laughs> says so check for messages there's a note for you dinosaur no phone number uh, eat phone chomp unstitch drug 200 dexterity what does she say eat Jessica what strangeness afflicts thee never mind for the Sun transits the horizon and I grow ever the more in need of thy assistance understand whilst you sleep under this roof thou art my lodger and a signature on this paperwork is by me required when did you start talking like this a provocative remark, sir, and by thee well made. Can you open these doors for me? Curious, sir, for I do not believe those doors to be locked. Well, what do I know? And thou will find in the telephone table thither a key to satisfy thy need. Alright. I can't open the desk drawer. I have no dexterity. To do, open a door, eat Gabby, eat cat. <laughs> oh, can't do anything. Eat Gabby. <laughs> Whoa there, horse. What got you all the horns and rattles? Been dipping into the nose paint again. Uh, hey, Gabby, I'm a dinosaur. whoop -a, pee poo I'm the quickest drawer in the West, sure enough. Gabby doesn't talk like that. Sure is, partner, sure is. Heh <laughs> heh. Can you open the door for me? Oh, I don't know. Never heard a head for puzzles, boring. That's got me right funkified. What do I do? Let's try eating the cat again. <laughs> Charles again? Real groovy pocket watch you got there, boring. I like to wear tick tick ticks, you understand me? Yes. A lot of power in that timepiece, a lot of power. Would you make a promise to me, baby? Would you promise not to throw that power away? A lot of good can be done with that groovy power, baby. Charles doesn't call me baby. I hear you, kitty cat. 
What do you say, kitty cat? Will you do me a promise? Promise not to throw away the groovy power in that timepiece? Can you open a door for me? Huh? What's that, Greta gobbled? Yeah, let's do it, man. Groovy kitty cat, absolutely smashing. Shake on it, kitty cat. I still don't have dexterity, leave. How do I get dexterity? Knock the chair over. Ah! I gained a dexterity. Ah! <laughs> Flip the table, I've got the dexterity for that now. What else can I do? Oh, I can open a desk drawer now. Oh, the drawer's locked. Jessica? Yeah, can't sign that yet. Put out the drawers. Gain a dexterity. Eat the table. <laughs> your stomach is bigger than your brain and you devour the entire table in a few quick bites. The keys to the doors now lie safe and sound in your dinosaur stomach. Does that mean I can open the door? Uh. Oh, can I go out here? No. Can I do something with this guy? Oh, we can shake hands now. Gained a dexterity. So I'm on six now, I think. So, can I... I can read a book now, I think, can't I? Read a paper. You peruse the newspapers, claws making only minor holes in the pages. I'm gained a dexterity. Read a book. Gained dexterity. You can't relate to most of the books they have here, but there's one travelogue by a diplodocus that proves moderately diverting. I think I'm on eight now. I might be able to sign Jessica's paper. No, yeah, it must be on eight. Gabby? Hmm, I run out of stuff to do. Oh, what was that? Oh, your talents carve letters help into the chalkboard. We're going to dexterity. Okay, let's talk to Jessica. Sign my name. I'm much obliged, Boring, and I hope from now thy sleep is all the more sweet for its legal correctitude. Alright, we're on ten dexterity. I think we can open a door now. Eat, open the door. So, we meet at last. With I looking the older man, though you are far older than I shall ever be. Wow, I've never saw this room before. We are the Alpha and the Omega. You the beginning of time and I its end. Will you walk with me, dear friend, to watch the death of our world and the birth of another? Uh, roar. Oh, right. Hey, tick, tick, tick. The hands of the uncursed pocket watch beats on with the current born correctly into the future. You pull the pocket watch out and look at it. It's gained some luster. The curse is lifted. Time is in its rightful home and you no longer have a tail. I've got 10 XP. I wish I had a tail. <laughs> now, what does it do for us? Reduce... Uh, it's an offhand item. Reduce it by mus uh, their, an enemy's muscle, mysticality and moxie by 5. Once per fight. Well, that's pretty good. What do I... Uh, offhand items. What did I have? The haunted duck call. Well, that only does it by one, so yeah, we've got a much better item. Uh, we could talk to Charles. You must be Charles Wallace, I'm Boring. Dead I am, pleased to meet you, Boring. What do you do around here? Oh, you general handyman sort of stuff. I keep the lights on and the water running. Build the detective Tron and the uncursing machine too. Wow, that's some real high-tech wizardry. Ah, uh, it's nothing really. Let me ask you something. Anything I could help you with? Charles seems preoccupied. He keeps checking his pockets in the drawers of his desk. Did you lose something? Yeah, I seem to have misplaced the chuck key to my drill. What's a chuck key, Chucky? Charles raises an eyebrow. It's a little twisty thing for tying in the chuck on a drill. Any idea where you lost it? It can't have gotten too far. The cord on this thing got stuck in the outlet, and it's not long enough for me to drill anything that isn't in this neighborhood. Well, I can help you look for it. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Like I said, it's gonna be nearby. 
Just wander around, I'm sure it'll turn up. Uh, okay, so we can try that on the map. Just generally wander around and it might turn up. As you're walking down one of Ocean City's residential streets on the way to where you're going, you hear eerie music coming from the upstairs window of a nearby house. Here we go, investigate. This seems like a pretty normal house in a pretty nice neighbourhood, but there's something odd about it. Some sort of uncomfortable energy that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Maybe it's something to do with that weird droning tone you hear coming from inside. Like a pained, inhuman moan constantly rising in pitch. Yeah, maybe that's it. You knock, but hear no response, so you nose your way inside. That eerie sound is even louder in here. It seems to be coming from upstairs. Also, the owner's interior design sensibilities are a little strange. A bunch of books about music theory. Even the most basic one would be totally beyond you. It's a day stand. Dusty disused chess set. Tea time was a long time ago. There's nothing left here but stains. The plate rack is a statement piece, and the statement is, I have too many plates. A cabinet full of backup plates. A shelf full of trophies from music competitions. A cabinet full of sheet music. Well, let's examine one. You pull out a sheet, but it's all in German. Und du kannst kein Deutsch gesprachen. Whatever that means. I think it's probably you can't speak German or something like that. But it's in German, so it's funny. <laughs> Climb the stairs. <laughs> a tired-looking man playing a cello here. Talk to him. What? Who are you? Why are you in my house? Sorry for intruding, but I heard the, uh, music, and I guess I have an intrusive nature. My name's Boring Dad. Well, I'm Ernst Simmer. Forgive me for not stopping, but it is vital that I continue playing. What are you doing? There is a darkness beneath my house. Did you check the fuse box? Uh, no, no, I... Well, it's probably that, then. Ugh, listen to me! I, I had a dream, a premonition of a dark rift appearing in my basement and growing until it swallowed the entire house. And then the neighbourhood, and then, and then, then the world! Well, that's quite a dream. It was not just a dream, I went downstairs to check out the basement and there is indeed a rift. As of now, it is still small. I must keep playing this cello to prevent it from growing any larger. Uh, how does playing the cello help? The bass vibration reverberates downward and is focused by the circle of furniture downstairs. This resonance inhabits the, inhibits the rift. Huh. I don't really get it, but okay. Are you a physicist or something? No, I am only a cellist. I cannot explain how I knew this would work. Hmm, okay. I'm sure there's a rational explanation. Uh, probably just a trick of the light, plus your anxiety over the nightmare. Well... Plus, I'm pretty sure your living room furniture can't create reality-strengthening sonic resonance waves. Oh, you're, you're probably right. Just an old man jumping at shadows, I suppose. Happens to the best of us. Don't worry, everything's fine. Talk to Ernst Zimmer. Hi, Ernst. Hello. Oh. Let's go back down. Uh-oh. Maybe convincing Zimmer to stop playing his cello wasn't such a good idea after all. Whoops. Oh, dear. Every one of these mouldering books is titled Blood. It would appear that two ghosts are playing a very spirited, ha-ha, game of chess. Daystand has become a nightstand. This chair is frighteningly non side up. Oh, no, all the plates. A vicious black sludge bubbles in the teapot. Well, let's take some, let's fish in it first. This isn't tea. I got an item, Eldritch Mist, and I'll take some sludge bubbles as well. This chair is barely there. Moths have eaten all of the contents and most of the container. Shelf full of trophies from murder competitions. This chair is whispering. Listen to it. Sit in me. Do it. You sit in the chair for a few minutes and nothing bad happens. Apparently it was all bark and no bite. Hm, just as well. Cabinet full of sheet music. We can look at it now. You pull out a sheet. It's a piece entitled All Arbeit No Spiel Makes Ernst a Dull Boy. Oh dear. Store has seen better jams. Go downstairs. Oh jeez. That sure is a dark rift in space over there just like Zimmer was afraid of. Well nuts. Boxes of mouldy sheep music. We can collect the mould. Jeez, these songs must really stink. We got Fustulent Grolch. This is definitely one of the most 
fustulant of the Grolches you're carrying around. Okay. There's a big hole in well here. Step through. Uh, really? Yes. You find yourself in an infinite black void. Oh, or well, it looks like an infinite black void, but you have the uneasy feeling that your brain is only showing you an infinite black void because it doesn't want to try and process what this place actually looks like. It's a weird feeling. Ooh. A thrumming spike of negra energy. We can dampen it. And this. And this. Let's try and avoid that monster for as long as possible. This creature is built more or less like a large muscular person. If you built a large muscular person out of some kind of writhing black ooze and or smoke and or just plain raw darkness. It has a fist sized glowing crystal embedded in its chest about where its sternum would be. And as you draw near you can feel it radiating invisible waves of energy. Kind of like that, kind of like heat coming off of a radiator. Except also the opposite of that. And also not related to that at all. Look, incomprehensible forces are tricky to describe, okay? The creature shambles back and forth, waving its arms in a way that almost looks like it's dancing or praying, or maybe just absent-mindedly flailing. It seems oblivious to your presence, although that will probably change pretty quickly if you try to interfere with it. Like, say, if you try to pry the glowing crystal out of its chest. Size it up. The creature looks extremely weak, almost docile. It's probably because I've dampened all the things. Pry the crystal out. You make a quick grab for the crystal, but it's firmly lodged in the creature's chest. The creature howls and its long spindly arms flail ineffectually as you, barely cognizant of your actions, plunge your hands into murky flesh, fingers questing through lukewarm tar until they find ribs, gritting your teeth, forcing open the cage, creaking, cracking, snapping like dry branches. You grab your prize and tear it free of the muck. The creature evaporates in a sigh of smoke. The crystal is both warm and cold in your hand and has a slight buzzing vibration to it. Let's take it with us. Yeah, something tells you that this crystal is very important, as well as being really shiny and pretty. A rift crystal. Okay. Let's go back. Uh, it occurs to you that taking the weird crystal out of here might be a bad idea. On the other hand, now, it's yours, and you'd prefer to keep it. Alright, let's smash it. You pull a hammer out of your inventory, or if you actually don't or if you don't actually have a hammer, whatever object would be most hammer adjacent, and give the crystal a solid thwack. It makes it sound like a baby being torn in half and bursts into glittering shards that shoot off into the darkness. Immediately you feel, well, I was going to say a massive earthquake, but since you aren't standing on the ground, you wouldn't feel that. It's more of an everything quake. You should probably get out of here. Uh-oh. You dive back through the rift just before it collapses, vanishes, heals. Thankfully, you find yourself back in Ernst Zimmer's basement and not some kind of horrible between-dimensions purgatory. You run up the stairs to tell Ernst the good news. Phew. Ernst Zimmer is looking pretty nervous about this whole situation. Hi, Ernst. Hello. I fixed it. I closed the rift. You did? Oh, that's wonderful. I owe you my life. And probably also my house's life. I can't remember what his voice was like. Here, take this cello. I have no further need of it. And to be quite frank with you, the thought of playing it ever again only pains me. Melee weapon. Well, technically it's Dad's cello now. You have no idea how to play the cello, but you do know how to swing a great big club. Okay. Wow, well, thanks. Which XP do I have now? I've got 38, which isn't enough to buy anything, I don't think. No. Alright. Interesting diversion. Alright, let's leave. Um, I want to go back and talk to Jessica, uh, Jessica again, as we've... Oh, well... <coughs> Here's an unusual sight. Four Glocklins are playing their glockenspiels while doing some kind of traditional folk dance. It involves a lot of skipping and hopping and turning around in a square with precise timing, so they aren't really paying any attention to you, or to anything else really. Let's join in. It does look kind of like fun, but you definitely don't know the steps and it would only cause total chaos. It would be simpler just to attack them since a brawl would probably result anyway. Alright, fine. What's going on? Okay, so, 2 AP, don't forget. Um, we can do 12 damage, which is an instant kill on any one of these. I 
think I might go for this one. But I could also... Goblins can't be hypnotized. Well, there you go. All right, we'll weaken this one. And then we'll hot tongue this one. Gabby will do four damage, which is enough to kill this one, so we'll do that. Oh, poor Eldridge. Um, all right, let's throw another stone at one. this one. And then Gabby can take care of this one. <laughs> you won! The goblins... You won! The goblins scamper away. One of them drops a piece of paper that appears to be a map to their hideout. <laughs> Excuse the dog. Someone's walking past the house. We got a... Glockenspielery Flyer. Okay, so we know where their hideout is now. 5 XP, 12 meat, and Eldridge has grown stronger. Alright, I want to go back in here. I found the watch. It was complicated. I'd be more surprised if you told me it was simple. Well, you know the drill. Strap it on and jump in the uncursing machine. I already did. I mean, it's a pocket watch, so I didn't strap it. Good, good. Go get some sleep, okay? You look like you've been through the ringer. I won't dispute that. There's something going on here. It's Murray's desk, piled with books and papers. You get a weird feeling about it for some reason. Let's investigate. Nestled among the books and papers is a book of old, but still valid, postage stamps with a few missing. They're surrounded with a haze of weird, shadowy energy, but you can still clearly see the illustrations of cute dogs on them. Wait a minute, cute dogs? That's just like the stamp that survived your luggage fire. Oh dang, of course, that stamp is what destroyed your luggage. All your best stuff was in there. Your clothes, your teddy bear. Oh, that tears it. This shadow business has become personal. I mean, it was personal already because of Murray being your uncle and all. Now it's extra personal. Brrr. What's up? These stamps. These stamps have shadow gunk on them and one of them killed my luggage. Oh my gosh. I guess that was my fault. I ran out of stamps and found those inside Murray's desk. I didn't even think to test them. I'm so sorry. No, oh, it's not your fault. It's whatever's causing this damn shadow stuff. I'm definitely going to put a stop to it, though. Wait, how many of these stamps have you used? Oh, just the one, thankfully. The rest must have already been gone when Murray found them. Well, that's good news, at least. Okay. I think I might, um... Let's go and check out Mrs. Brewster's, and then we'll then we'll go to the, uh... Glock Glocklin base. A well-dressed man flags you down. Excuse me there, my good chap. Might you have a match on your person? Uh, sure, here you go. The man tips his hat to you. Thank you kindly. This will be just the thing I need to ensure something that will be on fire at some point in the future. <laughs> you gave 5 XP. Mrs. Brewster's home for travelling salesmen. Okay. Well, we've got another hobo code here. Let's have a look. This code says, nice lady, but she only likes salesmen. Oh, well. Not super useful to a non-hobo, but at least you got some translation practice. Head inside? Sure. As you enter the boarding house, you discover some kind of hullabaloo, or perhaps a kerfuffle. A stern-looking middle-aged lady is surrounded by six agitated men, all talking over each other. Let's listen in. Gentlemen, I insist you settle down at once. We won't get to the bottom of this with you all acting like panicked schoolchildren. Mrs. Brewster, you've got to call the cops. Ah, oh, well, what this town calls police, I wouldn't trust to solve a jigsaw puzzle, let alone a serious crime. And I won't have those hooligans turning my house upside down. But, but there's been a m m murder Somebody has to do something. Well, you, what you can all do is go to your rooms and let me think. Oh, good gracious. The men file up the stairs, abashed but still fidgeting nervously. The men file up the stairs, abashed but still fidgeting nervously. Talk to the woman. Um, excuse me? Miss Brewster sighs, exasperated. I'm sorry, I don't have any vacancies. Well, I suppose I do, but I can't let you have the room until this whole mess has been sorted out. One of those men said something about a murder? Yes, it is absolutely ghastly. One of my lodgers was murdered in the night, and nobody heard or saw anything. I'm practically at my wit's end. Okay, we can offer to help. Maybe I can help. 
My name's Boring Dad. I'm kind of an independent investigator sort of thing. Oh, like the Belgian fellow in the mystery novels. Uh, what? Sure. Well, that's marvellous. If you can solve this mystery, I can pay you quite reasonably. Okay, it's a deal. Thank goodness. What can you tell me about the victim? He was a travelling salesman. All my lodgers are travelling salesmen. What did he sell? Oh, they come and go so frequently, I'm afraid I haven't the foggiest idea. Well, how did he die? I... I'm not sure. <clears throat> the body's missing. Look, you'd better just go and have a look for yourself. He was in 3C. I locked the door so that no one would mess around in there. Wait, she's given us the door key. Okay. Have a look around. Tiny oil paintings of previous borders. Okay. What is plow flower? Bathroom doors locked. Oh, that's the way out. So what's this door? Only Mrs. Brewster is allowed in the kitchen. Not a crumb to be found on the dining table. Mrs. Brewster keeps this place spick and span. Okay. So we've got 2C, 2D. I assume we can't get in these. Yeah, so we should go see the crime scene first. So 3C. You unlock the door and put the key in the secret pocket you use for things that won't ever need to be referred to again. Enter. You step into 3C and discover, holy crap! A massive pool of blood on the floor. And like Miss Brewster said, there's no body in sight. Uh, we can use the fishing rod. Nothing. Must be much shallower than it looks. Okay. What can I do with it? Holy jeez, is there even this much blood in a person? Nothing interesting about the bed, except it's next to a massive pool of blood. Windows locked, so the killer must have come from inside the house. Ordinary wash basin, no clues here. There's also a mirror. Fish. We've got an item of handful of clean water. Uh, check for clues. You look at yourself in the mirror. Hi, boring. Smile. Hey, they're good looking. Frown. Oh, no, we don't want to do all that again. Uh, check underneath the rug. You want the rug and... Uh, Whoa, what the heck? There's a crazy occult diagram underneath it. The lines and glyphs appear to have been burned onto the floor. You can see little blobs of melted candle wax at the points of the dodecagram, and it even smells faintly of weird incense. Was this some kind of ritual killing? Great, like regular old murder wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. What about the wardrobe? It's locked. I don't think there's anything else to see in there. That's, uh... Some high-heeled shoes have been carelessly left in the hallway. You're not sure which aspect of this would upset Miss Brewster the most. Take the shoes. We've got extra high heels. Which we can swap for our sandals. It makes our steps higher. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're keeping these, right? <laughs> Alright, knock on the door. Okay, we're gonna go and talk back to Mrs. Brewster first. The two pointy leaf leaves plants are holding the frondy one hostage. <laughs> it is a very silly game. <laughs> right, talk to her. Well, Miss Brewster, I've had a look in room 3C. Uh, did you find anything? I found a huge pool of blood, it was really gross. Did you find anything else? Yes, actually. An occult ritual circle. What? Oh my goodness, you think it was some kind of black magic sacrifice? I'm afraid it looks that way, yes ma'am. Well, I felt a lodger's religion was no business of mine, but I won't stand for this one bit. Are any of your lodgers involved with the occult, do you know? Hmm, I do recall one of them specialises in selling occult supplies and paraphernalia, but I'm afraid I don't remember which one, you'll have to ask around. Okay. Well, we may as well start at the top and work down. Start at 3A. You knock on the door and a salesman opens it. Yeah, something I can... Oh, hey, we meet again. Oh, yeah, you're the sunglasses guy. That's me, baby. What can I do for you? I'm investigating the murder. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I was hoping you could give me some information about the people who live here. Hmm, I don't really know any of these guys. There's a fellow... That sells jokes and gags somewhere on this floor, I think. There's also a guy that sells pants. 
But all I can tell you about him is he isn't the guy right below me. Sorry. No problem. Thanks anyway. So, 2A is not the pants guy. 3B. You knock on the door and a salesman looks out. Hello? Who are you? I'm investigating the murder. What can you tell me about the people who live here? Well, I pretty much keep to myself. All I know about the other salesmen is that the one who sells jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next door to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. What? <laughs> oh my god, are we going to have to remember all this? So... Jokes and gags is on this... Oh god, I'm going to have to write all this down, aren't I? Uh, I haven't got a pen near me. Never mind. We'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. So this should be the jokes and gags guy. Hi, I'm investigating the murder. How well do you know the other salesman here? I don't know any of these guys. Or do I think there's a guy who sells brushes? Whose neighbours with a guy who sells pants? Okay. I want to check the this one again. Sells jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. Oh, confusing. Who's there? I'm not opening this door with a killer on the loose. I'm investigating the murder. Do you have any information that would help? Oh, there's a salesman here who specializes in occult stuff. That seems pretty suspicious to me. Which room is he in? I'm not sure, but he isn't the one above me. He doesn't live at the same end of the hall as the victim, either. <clears throat> so it's probably the guy in 2B, then. You knock on the door and a salesman pokes his head out. Yes? What can I do for you? I'm investigating the murder. Ah, oh, yes. Real grisly business. Do you know the other salesmen that live here? No, not really. Just the guy who sells those little Derringer pistols. He was complaining about the guy who lives right above him. There's the trinkets and baubles guy, because he keeps making a racket, dropping stuff on the floor at night. It probably doesn't help you much, though. Hmm. I think that's him. Knock on the door. No response. Still locked. <laughs> Very good. You knock on the door and a nervous-looking salesman peeks out. What are you doing out in the hallway like that? Don't you know there's a murder on the loose? I'm investigating the murder, actually. Oh, thank God, somebody is. What do you know about the other salesman here? I know that there's a guy who sells occult stuff. I give him a white berth, though. All I know about him is he doesn't live in the room below the glasses salesman. I see. Neither of them are the victim, by the way. Okay, thank you. I think it's this guy. we talk to her again? Excuse me, Mrs. Brewster, who lives in 2C? They didn't answer and the door's locked. Oh, that's because 2C is my room. Oh, well, can I have a look inside? Certainly not. It's private. You can't possibly imagine I would kill one of my own lodgers. That would be terrible for business. I guess you have a point there. He figured out who the occultist is. Maybe if we confront him with it, he'll either confess or give us some, unus uh, or some usable information. Are you certain you know which one he is? I won't have you accusing the wrong fellow. Pretty sure. All right. Should we gather everyone together at the scene of the crime so you can do a dramatic reveal like in the novels? Uh, sure if you want. I must say, this whole murder business is simply dreadful. But it's the most interesting thing to happen here in years. Uh-huh. You head up to 3C and a few minutes... After a few minutes, Mrs. Brewster meets you there with a the salesman in tow. All right. Well, uh, I suppose you're all wondering why I've called you here today. I assumed it was so you could tell us who did the murder. Yes, that was my guess, too. Right, yeah. Well, as you can see by this weird circle on the floor, this killing probably had occult significance. Therefore, the most likely candidate is the occult goods salesman, who is the guy in 2... B. What? No, I don't. I sell pants. I'm the one who sells occult stuff, and I didn't kill anyone. This isn't even one of my circles. Well, nuts. Suddenly, the wardrobe door flies open, and a salesman jumps out. Heh <laughs> I fooled you all pretty good. What the? Who the heck are you? I'm a victim. I sell go jokes and gags and stuff. How do you like my new fake, giant fake rubber pool of blood? Isn't it a scream? Oh my god. Here, let me give you something for being such a good sport. Kid, we're in good health. We've got a foot's ring. Makes you more likely to encounter a traveling salesman. Uh, maybe. 
Now, if you'll all excuse me, I gotta roll this blood back up. Nine people in this tiny room is eight too many. Returns to the lobby. Hmm, well at least that all result resolved with a minimum of fuss. I hope you don't expect to get paid off that dismal attempt at mystery solving, though. Uh, well, at least it was an experience. We'll take our leave. How are we doing on the old XP front at the moment? We got 63, so that's not too bad. We could... Um, get HP regeneration. That seems pretty good. It does seem pretty good. That one's good too, but I am doing quite a lot of damage in fights at the moment, but... I feel like this, this would be good for us. Plus the extra XP is nice too. Alright, well, we're off. Actually, let's go back a sec so I can look up this flyer. Now we know where the Glockenspiel store is. Alright, let's go do that. You stop dead in your tracks when you see three of those weird fishmen lurking in the mouth of an alley up ahead. They're peering around with their glistening, staring eyes and glurbling at each other quietly until one of them notices you. It and its two companions start stalking towards you, making wet growling sounds. Oh, jeez, what even are you guys? Hello? Well, are you evil invaders? Or are you natives that were displaced by urban development seeking to reclaim what's rightfully yours? The fishmen confer briefly. Evil? Okay, thanks. As long as you're on the same page. Soda in the hole! <laughs> you shake the dubious soda until the ball starts to rattle, and then pop the tab and hurl it at the fishmen. It explodes in a spray of sweet carbonated water, which they like, and glittering alu aluminium shrapnel, which they don't. The confluence of these two conflicting emotions confuses them, plenty enough for you to make your escape. Phew! Okay, well we're gonna get in, we're gonna have to fight these guys, I expect. As soon as they notice you, these Glocklin guards start playing a menacing tune on their Glockenspiels. Well, as menacing a tune as it's possible to play on a Glockenspiel anyway, which is honestly not particularly menacing, but their intent is clear. Talk to them. Hello, what you want? Well? I want to talk to your boss. Have you an appointment? No, can I make one? No. I want to play a Glockenspiel. You have good taste in musical instruments, but our glockenspiels are not for sale. Oh, come on. Everything has a price. The price of a glockenspiel is no meat. Nine meat? I'll pay you nine meat for one. Oh, that joke does not work, even. I want to go look at that building behind you. Your glockenspiel shop? That is our hideout. You are in there not allowed. Oh, please. No. It is only for gang members. That is the whole point of a hideout. Uh, I want to fight you. <laughs> Yeah, we got our regen. Right, so let's have a look at these guys. 7 7, 12 12, 13 13. He's gonna hit Gabby. He's gonna buff. He's gonna hit Eldridge. I'll tell you what, let's throw a stone at this guy. And then we'll attack this guy. And then Gabby can flap slap this one. Oh, that's that's a given us enough to give him a kill. And then one that we do. Five XP. Oh, what's this? The owner of this place added a huge wasp nest in case the keep out sign wasn't sufficient. <laughs> Glocklins have really bled this store dry. Okay. The goblins are gl pounding out music that sounds like a quaint mountain village being completely wiped out by an avalanche of tiny sparkling jewels. This goblin looks a bit tougher than the others. Also, they're at the back of the room, so they're probably the boss. They look both delighted and outraged to see you. Since that's a tricky combination of emotions to imagine, let's just go with excited. As you step up closer to speak to the goblin, you notice that they appear to be wearing authentic German lederhosen, rather than the makeshift shorts and suspenders get-up that the other Glocklins are wearing. Not that you're an expert in traditional European fashions or anything, though. 
They sneer at you with glittering eyes. So you break into my house in and beat my guards together. Think you can? Think you, you can Gunter, the boss of the Glocklin's defeat? You pause for a second to pass this. Uh, just wanted to talk. Ah, you think goblins are pretty stupid, I bet. But you have one other think coming. I don't feel like having a conversation about goblin intelligence. Can I just say yes and then we fight? Sure. Then goblins are super dumb. Oh, oh, now you have it done. I am super angry now. So, we now have a fight, yes? Um, all the Glocklins in here are playing excited, exciting Glockenspiel fight music. I've got Gunther pretty riled up. This might be a really tough fight. Oh, we'll give it a go. Oh, HP 50. He's going to hit us all for 14. Holy shit. I can't hypnotize him either. Um, okay, well, let's toss this at him. It'll at least, at least reduce some of his stuff. Holy shit, he's going to be... No, he's not currently winnable. Maybe we have to take out the minions first. <sighs> Alright, let's do the minions first. Wow, you're really going to town on that thing. On the contrary, I'm playing it right here. Convince him to stop. You reach around behind the goblin and tap them on the opposite shoulder. When they turn to look, you definitely snag the mallet out of the hand. Hey, hey, where's my mallet went there? It was wild. You were playing so fast you accidentally threw it right out of the window. Don't worry, I'll save your place here while you go look for it. Ah, oh, thank you! The goblin scampers out of the door. Right, this one. Hey, could you maybe... Jeez, you're really sweating up a storm. I am so tired, but I must play on. Their hands and the rest of them look really sweaty. You could probably yank the little mallet out of their grasp, but that would require getting in sweat spray range. Ugh. Okay, can't do that. Uh, interrupt. Hey, could you please do me a favour and stop playing that glockenspiel for a while? No, no, never. Please. Oh, this music is my life. I will never to stop. Okay. Interrupt this one. Hey, could you stop playing for a bit? Haha, <laughs> no. Let's trick them into stopping. You want to stop playing and leave the room? That is not the case. Why did your eyes all swirly go? Huh, does hypnosis not work on goblins? I guess it does not. Well, uh, you should leave, because all the acoustics are bad in here, and your music will sound much better outside. Oh, okay. The goblin scampers out the door. Now, we got rid of a couple of them. Might be a little tough. Okay, we'll see how this goes. So he's going to do ten physical damage to all of us. Okay, that is still pretty hard. Uh... Oh, yeah, that'll be good. Alright, we'll probably get a couple of whacks at him this time. Let's get some healing back in. Plus my three regen. Um, let's put some bleeding on him. Immune to bleeding, of course he is. Gabby, heal us up again. Um, he's got 14 now. If I throw a stone, I can then kill him. There he goes. You won! Gunther has spieled his last Glock in this place. He slinks off to find some other venue to terrorise with his plinking. His remaining Glocklins look at each other and scurry out. We gain 7 HP. Nice. We can loot the dusty old cash register. We gain 200 meat. Thanks, Gideon, whoever and wherever you are. And I'll probably glock spill. This will look good in your room. Uh, let's come back to that. Let's have a look in this uh, thing first. Self adhesive rivets. A plus one physical armor to a pair of pants. And an all. What, what pants am I currently wearing? Chibata's pants, which give us mysticality. So actually, yeah, that is pretty good. Um, so let's do these. Nice, so we've got plus one physical armor and that now, so that's pretty good. Alright, let's take this Glockenspiel off. 
added it to our room. Uh, and on that note, I think we'll probably... Um, oh, let's rest first. <laughs> Can I go to bed? I thought we had to go to bed. What's on my to-do list? Go to sleep. Talk to Go talk to Fancy Dan. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll go talk to the guy about the uh, speakeasy deed. Let's do that. Hey, it's you again. Did you find Oliver? Uh, yes. Hmm, I don't like the sound of that. Oliver is gone. The handoff went extremely bad. Badly. Yeah, that too. You go over the events at the fridge, fridge factory. Fancy Dan makes a variety of faces at various points in your story because Fancy Dan is a good listener. Show him the deed. Dan skims the deed. Hmm, says that here that the ownership of the speakeasy is automatically transferred to whoever has physical possession of this deed. Huh, is that legal? None of this is legal. Oh yeah. I guess you're my new boss, baby. Let's have one drink to mourn the old boss and another one to celebrate the new one. Good idea. I guess we ought to change the name of the place since, well, Oliver's place is no longer Oliver's place. I suppose that's right. Got any ideas? Well, you could go traditional and just call it Boring's Place. Or something hip like the Purple Door. Or something incisive and avant-garde like, I don't know, Noblesse Oblige. Uh, let's call it Boring's Place. I like it. Now to business. To business! We make the beer in-house, so that's safe, but we're out of everything else. And based on your story, I'd say the stuff at the factory isn't safe to use. Yeah. If you can find booze or mixers or garnishes, bring it back here. Any idea where to get started with that? No, but you might check with Barnaby. Barnaby. Dan points at the milky-eyed sot at the table by the wall. He doesn't see very well, but he's got a nose for news and a sixth sense for booze. He might know where you can find what you're looking for. Thanks. Alright, we'll leave. Alright, we'll talk to the milky-eyed sot, Barnaby. I will buy him a drink for five meat. You buy him a drink and await his prognostication. You spend five meat. After a few moments and a few sips, he clears his throat and speaks. Eh, distilled to its essence, her lake is just a valley abandoned. I see, I think I see. Buy him another drink. The lake is deep enough to drown dreams, but not the sins of the grandfather. All right, one more. The lake, oh, it's the same one. Try another one. Same one. All right, leave him to his milkiness. Yeah. Okay, it wasn't particularly helpful. We're going to go back to bed. I think that's the last thing on our to-do list. Hey, Bonin, before you go to bed, I need you to approve a new tenant for the storefront next door. What? Why is that up to me? Charles shrugs. Somebody's got to do it. There's three applicants for the place. Okay, what are they? The first applicant is Rodkin's Fine Jewelry, a jewelry store could really class up old Plunkett Street. The second is Truncheons and Bludgeons, this fellow is really excited about weaponry. And the last applicant is Bertram's Bakery, but it's a buddy of mine from my restaurant days, he makes a good loaf. Uh, well let's go with the jewel rod, jeweler. Okay, I'll get her moved in and get the storefront ready for her applicants. Thanks Charles. Can I do anything with the glockenspiel? I can play it. <laughs> Alright, let's go to bed, I guess. Oh, where are we this time? Our chest is still on fire. Who's this? It's Jeff, the kid who used to bully you in third grade. Make amends. Hey, Jeff, listen, I just... No hard feelings, okay? I understand in retrospect that you must have had problems at home. And I just want you to know everything is okay now. Jeff swats the overdue library book out of your hands. Oh, I see. Since this is just a dream version of you, you're still as much of a jerk as you were in third grade. Jeff suddenly punches you, knocking out all of your teeth. Hey, if this was actually happening, I'd be really mad. You pick up your teeth and walk away. What a jerk. It's that creepy crimbo lady from the refrigerator factory, now in literal nightmare form. Okay. Excuse me, I need to get past you. Why? Are you in a hurry to wake up? Darling, it's crimbo. You should be making merry. <clears throat> Crimbo is still months away. Oh, but it's always Crimbo in dreams, dear. Uh, Merry Crimbo, then. Merry Crimbo, dearie. I didn't have time to properly introduce myself before. I'm Dark Noel. 
In an affectation as goofy as her name, she curtsies. Dark Noelle, eh? You're really taking this motif seriously, right down to your weird, evil-looking crimbo hat. Her smile falters a little. Evil-looking? I told you at the refrigerator factory. It's just a... Wait. She points to the weird device she's holding at her hat. It starts beeping in a fast, irregular pattern. You're telling me that you can see the special crimbo magic with your eyes? Uh, yeah, if that's what it is. <clears throat> this is decidedly unfestive news. I'd better talk to the president. You want to talk to Calvin Coolidge about your crimbo hat? I want to talk to the real president about you. I see. Yeah, that's a problem, dear. And I'll see you soon with the solution. She scowls and jumps off the edge of whatever this is you're standing on. Ominous. Uh, we can take a close look at this bookshelf. And we've got an item, the melting mine. What does that do? The only way to interact with your inventory during a dream is if you had convinced Freddy to hold it for you at the exact moment you went to sleep. I did that, though. No, you didn't. I did! I was ready to hold my stuff and he said yes. You don't even know Freddy. Fine, you caught me. Alright, back through the void. <laughs> the sunglasses guy again. Alarmingly, a man in an expensive suit is standing at the foot of your bed. What the heck? Who are you? You may call me Don Toblerone. I represent a certain organization of, shall we say, a like a man did criminals. Organized criminals? Like the mob? Wait, you're the Don of the local mob? The mob boss in my bur room, personally? No, 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 I'm not the Don. That is merely my uh, nomenclature. It's an abbreviation for Donald. Oh, well that's confusing. It has been a matter of some confiscation, yes. I do have a soubriquet, but I don't care for it very much. What is it? Donny Thesaurus. I'm going to hazard a guess that they call you that because you like long words. That is very astute of you. Of course, this institution comes at no surprise to me. My associates tell me you handled yourself well during the uh, conflagration at the refrigerator manufactorium. Uh, do you actually own a thesaurus? I am here to propound for your considerationing a certain proposition. Come again. I'm here to make you an offer. Oh. Can I refuse it? Certainly. Though your refusation would be, uh, shall we say, unadvisatory. What's the offer? From time to time, my collegiates and I have certain uh, requirements, but lack the necessary manpower to achieve them. At such junctures, we make lucrative arrangements with certain capable individualists. We find ourselves at this moment at a juncture, such as the junctures I have thus oscribed. So you want me to do contract work for the mob? Exactingly. Uh, sure, maybe that's what I am, a mobster. <laughs> I an excellent decision if I may articulate such. So what happens now? Just uh, sit tight, as they say. We will call upon you, telephonically. He gives you a curt nod, then leaves the room through the window. Eh, it takes him three or four tries to work the latch. All right, then. Cool. And I think we'll leave it there for today. So thanks very much for watching this episode of uh, Shadows Over Loathing. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you had did, then uh, please do hit the thumbs up button on the video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the game. And uh, subscribe to the channel too if you've not done so before. Because that would be amazing. So I uh, hope to see you again for the next episode. Bye for now.